Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous 12 Makes of Christmas series. This is our last new video for 2018, but you guys have enjoyed it, so I'm sure we'll do it again next year. And again, if you haven't uh, been following along, you can check out all the videos in the playlist that are linked here. But make sure you go sign up for emails over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com and you can make sure you get all the videos that way. We put out new videos every week and you can also subscribe on YouTube and ring the bell notification so you don't miss anything. All right, so if you've been following along, you know the deal, we're making fast fun Christmas gifts or holiday gifts. And I've got a new niece this year, which means I need to make a new stocking. So I'm going to be using charm packs again. Um, we're pretty low on these charm packs because you really love the mug rug video and bought a bunch of stuff from that um, as far as winter charm packs go. But you can always get a fat quarter bundle too and make your own. And that would actually be great if you want all your stockings to be coordinated for the entire family because then they can all kind of mix and match but everyone can have their own um, distinct stocking, so it would be fun. I'm going to quilt mine after it's pieced, so we need a little bit extra fabric because of that, because we need some backing for the quilting plus lining when it's all done. So about a yard and a quarter of fabric for your lining, and then I'm just using a white cuff. It'll look real nice and wintry. And then this is a two-in-one video because I'm also going to show you how to do this really fun swirl design from Full Line Stencil using the Quilt Pounce. And I'm gonna be using pink chalk for that because it's gonna show up really well on this light blue wintery charm pack. It is called Winter Love um, and it's put out by Clothworks. I really like it, it's super cute. It's going to be a nice soft um, colors and I like it because my niece is still under a year and it has cute little animals and penguins that make little love hearts, but it also will grow with her as well. So it will still be good, you know, when she's 20 and 10 and you know all the way along the line so hopefully she will enjoy it i really we don't get a ton of kids prints over at quilt addicts anonymous mostly because i kind of like things that grow with the kids you know my daughter loves all of the quilts she, every time i make something she wants it and she asks this for me and it's never anything that's specifically kids she just loves it and she's four so you don't need to have like monsters and unicorns and whatever you can just kind of go with something fun and bright and they'll love it so let's get started all right so this video is going to start out a little bit like the last one because we're going to be doing four patches of these if you think about a christmas stocking they're usually pretty small so i don't want to use just plain five inch squares because the scale is going to be off so i want to turn these five inch squares into four patches just like we did for that mug rug video that way the size of the squares are going to be a little bit smaller and they are going to fit better with the small size of the Christmas stocking. Kind of like if you made a mini quilt, you wouldn't use gigantic pieces to do it. You would use smaller pieces, but we're going to put them together in a really fast way so that way it goes together really quickly. All right, so I'm kind of splitting these up into what I would consider dark and medium prints. Like that's definitely, these are all kind of darker and then some truly light prints. So these are all lighter. This one is kind of medium, but it definitely is dark next to this one. And I'm not going to be very specific about how I paired these up, because I could drive myself nuts doing that. So I'm just gonna always make sure that a light print is next to a medium print when I'm working on this, and it'll be just fine. All right, so I'm just gonna flip these right sides together, and I'm just gonna line up my edges And then I'm just gonna go ahead and sew down uh, using a quarter inch seam as I go down here. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. And you can feel free to chain piece these because um, we're just gonna do the whole charm pack up so that we have plenty of uh, squares to work with. Now, once I finish sewing down one side, I'm also going to sew a quarter inch down the other side as well. So not all charm packs are true five inches. This one is pretty sinking close. So I'm gonna be able to cut this up the center and just measure two and a half inches from the side and it'll be just fine. Um, but do measure and make sure that you're not getting lopsided rectangles when you cut these in half. So now when you open these up, we have mirror image. 
pieces and we're gonna use those to create our four patches with our other pieces. So since I'm pairing everything with a light and a dark, I'm just gonna make sure that I am pressing that seam so that it is underneath the dark side of the fabric rectangle. So now I've got these two rectangles and they're both pressed with the seams underneath the dark side. So if I flip this over, then I've got one seam going up and one seam going down, and I'm able to nest those seams and create some really great joints without too much effort. So I'm just laying those right on top of each other, and you can see from the top that I've got them going in opposite directions. This is kind of a feel thing, it's hard to explain on video, but it should feel like a threshold in your home um, between doors. And it should feel nice and flat. There shouldn't be any bumps or any gaps when you feel and press it between your fingers. I'll just take a pin and I'm gonna put it in the right side of that seam allowance. The reason why is I'm gonna sew until my needle is down in the left side of the seam allowance. Then I'm gonna remove my pin and while that needle is kind of acting as a pin and holding those joints together perfectly, and then I can sew on without having to worry about anything getting off. And do the same thing on the other side. Just like before, I'm gonna measure two and a half inches in from the side. And now I've got two four patches and they're super cute and they are ready to be sewn together, but I have to make a whole lot more of them first for um, all the pattern to go along with this, along with a uh, diagram of how to cut your stocking. We've got the template for you. Just go to shop.quiltedexonomist.com and I'll tell you how many of these you need to make. It's a lot but it's fun and it'll be adorable when it's all done and a great family heirloom. So keep making your four patches and then we'll come back and sew them together into rows. Now, if you had a charm pack that was way off on its sizing, now would be the time to square that up. It should measure four and a half inches square. What you'll want to do is measure two and a quarter inches from all of your centers in order to trim that up if you end up with one that's larger than it should be. But now's the time to do that. Um, mine is really good. It's right on where it should be, so I'm not worried about it. But again, if you have any concerns about that, now's the time to do that. All right, so I finished sewing my entire charm pack into four patches using the method I just showed you how to do. I have two extra and I have arranged them into five rows of eight. And so I'm gonna piece those together into rows. I have, for the most part, tried to get it so that my seams are going in opposite directions and that I don't have any two fabrics next to each other so it's gonna look nice and scrappy when it all comes together. But uh, don't stress too much about it, just, you know, just have fun, it's supposed to be a fun project. It's been about two hours of sewing and pressing and cutting to get to this point. And so I'm gonna sew these together. I'm gonna join my four patches into rows and then my rows together until I have a completed piece and then we're gonna do the quilting. So I've gotten the top completely sewn together. It should be a little bit smaller than a half yard of fabric at this point. And now I'm going to quilt it. I've layered and basted it already. I use straight pins this time because it's just so small and I'm just gonna be careful as I quilt, but safety pins are probably a better option. I just have no idea where mine are right now. So I'm going to use Quilt Pounce by Hansi Creations and a full-line stencil. The company owns both of them. It's kind of the same thing, but a little different. So these are great because this is the same material as like screen printing a t-shirt. So you're going to take chalk powder, put it in the pounce pad, and I'll show you how to do that. And then you're gonna be able to swipe it through and it will mark your designs and you mark the complete design. So like some stencils, 
there's like all these dashes where they have to keep the plastic together. This one you can see exactly where you're supposed to go. And I'm using pink for this project because you want something that is going to contrast with the fabric that you have. So blue wouldn't be great because then everything here is blue and white also wouldn't be great because there's a lot of white on here. I just wouldn't be able to see it. So I'm gonna use pink. And if you have a couple of these, you need to have one for every color that you're doing. So I have one that I've used in other videos that has the ultimate white that irons off and I can't put the pink in here because, or in that one, I need a separate one because it's going to be covered in pink on the bottom of this applicator. And then I wouldn't be able to use the ultimate white iron off ever again because the pink you have to brush or wash off in order, and it's really easy. It comes off super fast and super easy. And it may even be off by the time you're done quilting a significant amount. But I really love this stencil. I think it's perfect for winter. We have it at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com along with the pounce pads and chalk and refill chalk. Um, it's by Dusty Farrell and it's number 45001. And it has these beautiful swirls. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch around to the swirl. Then we're going to backtrack go into this swirl, backtrack, go around to the next swirl, come here, backtrack. And if we go over our stitching lines a little bit, that's gonna be okay. But you're just gonna have this really beautiful all over swirl that's a little bit fancier than your typical swirl. And it just gives it a little bit extra pizzazz. And specifically for this one, I think it's gonna look like snow swirling across the stocking. So I think that's gonna be really cute. So I'm gonna show you how to fill up your pounce pad here. And I'm going to move this because sometimes you get a little spillage with this and I would rather clean it off my white table than have a bunch of extra pink chalk to wipe off of the actual quilt. So let me move this to the side and I'll show you how to fill this up. I should probably also tell you that it really doesn't matter what you use for your backing fabric for this part of it because you're not gonna see it. It's gonna be hidden by the quilt lining. Now you don't want anything too crazy because you don't want um, to be able to see through it. Um, so like you wouldn't wanna do black if you have a light blue Christmas stocking because you would see that. But this nice light blue, it's great. You know, I get to use up some stuff that I've had for a while and I just need to move it um, out of my stash. Okay, so what I've done is this comes off like a bank topper like when you were a kid. So you're gonna take that off and then I usually just open up a little corner and then I just kind of put it in there. If you have like a funnel, you could use that too. But you wanna fill it up so that the chalk is going up to the top. And then I want to sort of smush all that back in like that. And then I'm gonna put the topper back on. That's gonna kind of force it in and around in there. Now we're gonna bang this on the desk 50 times. And I mean bang it, like you are frustrated because you waited till the last minute to do all your holiday gifts and you now have to do this on Christmas Eve frustrated so that your kid can have something to open on the next day. All right, so when you're refilling it, you can get away with doing that just one time. But for the first time you're filling it, you're gonna wanna repeat that process one more time. So you can see that it has all kind of settled and moved out. So I'm going to fill it up one more time. The biggest problem that people have with these is they get them and they don't prime them correctly. That's what this is called. And so then they're like, oh, it doesn't work. And this is, you really have to beat it to force that chalk through. And then you'll be able to have like a pink cloud of chalk go through. Okay, so I'm gonna smush that in there. Push it down there good and beat it 50 more times. All right, so now if I undo this, oh yeah, we have lots of pink where previously this was really white, now it is really pink. So we are ready to use this. You don't wanna have too much excess in there because that's just wasteful. Um, but I know that they will demo with these like all weekend at a show and they can go through one bag of chalk in that time and that's with constant use. So you can get a long ways out of this. But again, it's, it's good to have a couple of different colors. So I recommend you start with Ultimate White and uh, practice with that. Uh, but if you have a project that you need and it needs like this is blue, we wanna use pink so that way we can see it. Okay, so you would not wanna mark this entire top all at once. That would not be a good idea. 
because you are going to end up wiping off the chalk as you're working with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it going top to bottom. And I'm gonna, and since this one's so small, I'm just gonna start on one side and work my way over. And what I'm doing here is I'm lining up these registration marks. They look like little targets. And I'm gonna line that up right in the corner of my piece because that kind of designates where the edges of your piece are going to be. So if I use them to line it up, I can see through here that this is the edge of my fabric here and then same up here and there. Then I know I'm gonna be okay and that I'm gonna be nice and square as I'm working, which is always a good thing. And that way I can just quilt right across and I only have to worry about marking one little bit at a time and it's gonna be a lot easier than trying to do a whole lot and trying to keep the chalk on because it does, it's meant to come off. It's supposed to come off and it's not gonna come off before you use it as long as you only mark a little bit at a time. Okay, so I'm holding this part steady with my hand because I don't want this to shift on me because then my lines are gonna look like double vision and that's gonna be more challenging. So I'm gonna hold that and then I'm just swiping it across. I know it says pounce pad, so you kinda wanna do this with it, but that is just gonna make a mess and it's not gonna transfer any lines. All right, so I've gotten that. I usually go over it twice. And you do wanna make sure that you're getting those registration marks because that's what you're gonna use to line it up with for the next time. All right, now before I pull this up, I wanna kinda lift up the corners and take a peek and make sure that the lines have transferred. They have really well over here. Let me check a little bit over here. But you don't wanna move it too much because if you need to redo something, like I need to redo like down here a little bit, you don't want it to move significantly because then it could be harder to get it back where you want it to go later. All right, let's see how that turned out. That's a lot better. So now what I'm going to do is I still have a few of these down here to mark. So I'm just moving everything down and then I'm going to line up the registration marks and I can see right here is where the swirl ends and so it's gonna pick up right there. And if you don't get it super perfectly in line, that's not really the end of the world because you can kind of just fudge and get into it, but you do wanna try and get as close as you can. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of putting my thumbs on these registration marks and I'm trying to line it up right on top of where we ended off. And then sort of take a peek and I am in line with that line, so that's good. And I'm kind of also looking through to make sure that I look like I'm in line with the piecing as well. So that way it'll look nice and straight as I go through it. Okay, I'm satisfied with that placement. So now I'm going to, again, put my hand down. Do a couple swipes over. Take a peek and see how it did. Okay, so it looks like I need to bang this again. You don't want to bang on top of this, it'll knock it off. So I'm gonna do it off to the side. One more time. All right, that transferred really well. So now I'm gonna be able to see where I'm coming in at and just continue on with that swirl. So now I'm gonna get some machiner's quilting gloves on, put my free motion foot on my machine, and get started on this. I always wear my machiner's quilting gloves when I am doing free motion quilting. They do get a few colors on them, especially from the chalk, and sometimes they take on the color of your fabric, but they don't transfer from one quilt to another, so it's all good. Well, they have little grippies on the fingertips. It helps you move the fabric around a little easier with less wrist and back and shoulder strain. All right, so I'm gonna position this just so I'm starting right at the edge of the quilt. And I'm going to put my needle down and back up again and use that to bring my bobbin thread to the top. You wanna do that anytime you stop and start because that will help ensure you don't have a thread nest at the bottom. So I have the fabric just neatly in front of me and I've got it so the chalk is not scraping against my body. One time I had a woman come in, they weren't to our shop in Rock Island and they couldn't figure out how to use this and they ended up with chalk all over their bust as they were working on it and they were literally scraping the chalk off onto their body as they were working. So you don't wanna do that. So you wanna position it so that way it's not going to wipe itself off on itself or you. Now I usually slow my sewing machine down to the medium stitch and that will help me sort of keep it going steady 
but I can pull my foot down more. So I'm just kind of following that swirl. I'm going to go all the way out. And right now I'm just trying to trying to get a rhythm. I want to have even stitches and stitch length. So step one is getting that figured out, what your rhythm is going to be. All right, so I'm kind of following along. I'm not exactly on top of that line. That's okay. It'll just add a little bit extra texture. All right, so I've gotten to my curly cue out there, and I'm going to pull my pin out at this point. And I've got to follow that curly cue around. And then backtrack. I gotta see where we're going next. Sometimes if you're getting yourself confused of where you're at, it's helpful to look at it. So I've done this swirl and I've come around. I've done this swirl, so I need to come back out and then hit pick up my next swirl here. I ran out of bobbin, so while I did that, I pulled everything off, and some of my uh, chalk is fading a little bit. So what I've done is I can still see my registration mark, so I've lined everything up with that. And I'm just going to add a little bit more chalk back in here to give myself a better view and guide, because you know it's supposed to come off, you don't want it to be on there forever. But sometimes it can wipe off a little bit before you want it to, but it's really easy to just remark and get some nice clear lines to follow. Now I can see really well where I've been and here's where I'm at and I need to get going to come back around here. So since I've stopped, I need to pull that bobbin thread up again to the top. There's kind of two ways to do this. You can sew in place for a couple of stitches, which is what I do. If you want it to be like an heirloom or enter it into a show, you would want to tie those things off manually with your hands but I just like to sew in place for a couple of stitches and that sort of holds everything in place and you can snip your threads and not worry about it. Especially for a Christmas stocking like this, which isn't gonna be laundered or anything, it's just gonna sit out one month a year, that'll be plenty. All right, so you can see here that I'm not perfectly on my lines, but it doesn't matter because that chalk is just going to brush away and you'll never know that it was there. You could also wash it out if you are having some trouble spots, but usually brushing it away or a damp cloth will get it out just fine. What you don't wanna do is take an iron to this because there's pigment in it and that will heat set it and that you're having it that way forever. And to be completely honest with you, this is one of the, the first time I'm using this stencil. And there were parts of it where I was like, oh, I'm not so feeling this so much because I felt like it wasn't coming out as well as I hoped it would. But as I step back and I look at it a little bit better from a distance, I really do like the texture that was created by this. And I think it's gonna look really cute on the stocking once I kind of got you know, the motion down. So if it's something that's new to you, you might wanna not do it straight on that one. I've been free motion quilting for years and years, but this was a new stencil to me. So you might wanna practice it somewhere else first rather than be like me and do it for the first time on camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and quilt the rest of this. And to just keep going down, what I would do here is I would just keep lining that up and I would line it up so that way there's registration marks. I've already wiped mine off but you would be able to mark them up from side to side as well. And I just wanna make sure that my curves are overlapping just a little bit. So I want to make sure that that is nice in the line. And I'm just gonna keep working my way down until I've done the entire stocking. Then we're gonna come back and turn it into actually a Christmas stocking. So I know it's a lot of work to get to this point, but 
it's a lot of fun and totally worth it in the end. So go finish your quilting and then we'll come back and turn this into a Christmas stocking. All right, we are in the home stretch of making this quilted Christmas stocking. I've got all my pieces quilted up and what I've done is I have folded it in half and I pinned along where all the seam joins are so that way I know that it's gonna be nice and straight from the front to the back. I've also layered it on top of my lining fabric because we wanna conceal all the raw edges. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, lay my stocking template down. And again, you can get this template over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We're gonna have it available for free for you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay it down and I'm going to arrange it so that it's totally being covered. Um, I've got fabric along all sides. And then taking a marking tool, I'm just gonna trace around that to transfer that template. Now you're not gonna see these marks, they're gonna be sewn into the seam allowance, but I wouldn't use anything like a permanent marker, that would probably be really challenging to see. And it might bleed a little bit if you ever had to wash it for any reason. All right, so I've traced that down and now I'm going to put some pins going through all layers. So that way I can cut through all layers at once without anything shifting around. You don't need a ton of pins, just enough to sort of keep it together as you're going. All right, now I can go ahead and cut this up. I do go ahead and use the rotary cutter on the straight edges, and then I will transfer over to scissors for the rest of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpin this and then we need to rearrange it a little bit so that way when we sew it together, all the right sides are facing the way they should be. All right, so I want to have this so that the right sides of my stocking are facing each other. And then I'm going to put it so that the right sides of the lining are also facing each other. If you don't wanna mess with that, just use plain white fabric or solids and then you don't have to think about it. But as long as you have the right sides of the stocking and then the lining on top, the next part is gonna be a breeze. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sew all the way around, reinforcing our stitches at the top of the stocking and we're gonna leave the edge open for turning. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start pinning these together so that everything is nice and even. Starting with the top corners. And then working my way down. I put my walking foot on the machine to help move everything through at the same rate. Now starting at the top, I'm gonna to start sewing around. I'm gonna take a little bit of a generous quarter inch seam, maybe three eighths of an inch would be good. Um, it's not exactly heirloom sewing, so your quarter inch seam doesn't matter so much. What matters is that you're consistent and you catch all the layers. When I get all the way to the end, I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce the stitches just so that it's nice and secure. If you're doing a bunch of these, you can do this step all at once and that way you're changing feet less often and it goes a lot faster. So now you wanna check on all your seams and make sure you caught all of the layers, which we did here. 
Then you're going to open it up and you're going to put your hand through the piece part. So we have piecing on both sides here. I'm just going to reach my hand through to the toe. Give that a tug. This is why we reinforce those stitches on the sides so that way when you're doing this, it's not going to start coming apart on you. And then kind of smooth everything out. You want to get it as smooth as you can at this point. Um, if you're having trouble, you can always put a couple of clips in those inner corners. But here we've got our nice little stocking. But I want to push it out as much as I can now because it gets a little harder to do once you have the top on, although it is possible. So now we have our quilted Christmas stocking and we're all nice and lined up on the edges here. Our seams are coming together nicely. And then also on this side as well. If you wanted to, you could have like specifically pinned to make sure that happened. It's kind of a happy accident for me, but since they were already lined up when I cut it, the chances of them staying that way um, are the way they are. So now we need to make the cuff and a hanger and then we'll install it and our quilted Christmas stocking is all done. So I've cut a piece of white fabric that is nine inches by width of fabric. Now to determine how wide this needs to be, what you need to do is flatten out your stocking top, get it as flat as possible, and then you're going to measure it. And this is six and a half inches. So we're gonna double that, which is 17. And then I'm gonna add a half inch for my seam allowance. So 13 and a half. So we've got six and a half doubles is 13. And then we're going to um, add that half inch. So 13 and a half inches is the piece I need here. So 13 and a half by nine, and that'll be enough for my seam allowance um, to get that cuff in. So, but your width is going to vary because depending on how deep of a seam you took, this measurement may be slightly different for you. While I'm trimming everything up, I also am going to cut my hanging piece. So I'm just going to cut a piece that is three inches wide by that nine inches. I'm gonna take this piece of fabric and I'm just going to fold it in half. Since it is kind of a long piece, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a pin at the top and at the bottom, just to hold those corners nice and securely together. Now I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam down the raw edges to secure this. And I'm also going to press this piece to create the hanging sleeve so that I can sew all of it in one swoop. This bit, you're gonna fold it in half lengthwise, just like you would for a piece of binding. And then you're going to press that seam. Just press that to hold it together. Then we're gonna fold these in on itself. And if you want to, you can do one half at a time for that. Now, if you want to, you can switch back to a regular presser foot to do this. I'm just gonna line everything up so that is even with the metal part of my sewing machine and that will give me a quarter inch seam. take this and we're going to press the seam open so that it is easier to fold in half and set inside of our stocking. Now I can take this and matching up my seams, I can flip this so that my raw edges are even. You really just want all of these raw edges to be nice and even with each other and your points to be fitted right nicely to each other here. All right, now I'm gonna stick this inside the lining of my stocking. I wanna open it up so that I've got lining on both sides of the stocking that's gonna hide any of those raw edges that are in there. So now I can slip this inside and I'm going to line up those edges with the seam 
of the stocking. So you can see here's my seam and then here's my stocking seam. And I usually do that on the outside edge as well. That way you have a nice solid piece of fabric going around. And what I like to do here is pin so that the pointy part of my pin is on the inside of that stocking. I find I stab myself less when I'm doing it that way. All right, so now I'm just gonna put my fingers in like this so that way I can pull this nice and taut. And the next pin I'm going to do is going to be at the opposite end in the seam. Like that. And then I'm gonna do two more pins about halfway around, just making sure that all of these raw edges are lined up with each other. One more side. So I'm gonna take my hanger, I'm gonna fold it in half, and I want it to stick out so that my folded edge is facing this way. So when I slip this in, I'm gonna make sure that the folded edge is going toward the toe of my stocking, and then I'm gonna fold it upside down, and I'm gonna stick it in between the cuff and the lining. So I've got my cuff right here and I have my lining here and I want to stick it right there next to it on the back side. So it's just tucked right there. I'm going to give that a pin. Hold that in place. So I like to start with the back of my stocking when I'm going around and that is just so that way if there's anything that gets overlapped or bunched up a little bit, it's gonna be in the back where you're not really gonna see it as much when it's hanging on the mantle. So I'm gonna start, I'm taking a really generous quarter inch seam. I'm gonna reinforce those stitches. And I'm just kind of pulling things out of the way and stitching. And then you can sort of Move it a little bit, flatten this out as much as possible. And if you can push those pins in as much as possible so that they're out of the way and they're not gonna get caught on your machine. When you get back to the original area, go ahead and reinforce those stitches again. You can cut your threads. Now is the fun reveal point. We're going to unwrap that and pop the cuff over. Our hanging tab is going to come up as long as you put that in between the cuff and the lining. And now we have a really cute stocking that you can put lots of goodies in. So super cute. I'm gonna give this a press just because we've manipulated it a lot and it helps it look a little bit better when it's all said and done. Give it a little spritz with flatter. It is a starch alternative. I'm using the scentless one, but if you like a good scent to go with it, you can. Just make it look nice and crisp. Well, this is it. We have one Christmas stocking made from one charm pack. So the next time you see a fun Christmas line, you can have an idea of what to do with it. It really looks very cute and we quilted it and it's very custom and it just looks fun. So you can make your whole family ones or every time you have an addition to the family, make them one as well. We've got the template and the instructions for how to make this charm pack Christmas stocking over at shop.quiltaddictsamas.com. You can download that for free. I hope you've enjoyed our 12 makes of Christmas series. I certainly have enjoyed making it for you. I'm sure we will do it again next year. So if there's something that you want to know how to make, just pop it down in the comments below and we will consider it for the next holiday season. Thanks so much. Make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And you can also subscribe for emails over at shop.quiltaddictsamas.com and you get 10% off your first purchase from us. Until next week, happy quilting. We're just gonna leave the cat in. I'm, I'm good with it. I can't, she's just taking over. Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs>